This is an old truck. When it rolled off the assembly line, Bill Clinton was still president, Shrek was at the top of the box office, and the most visited website was AOL.com. A lot has happened since then, a lot of years, a lot of miles, about 186,000 of them. It has dents and dings and scratches. If this were any other truck, it would be worth very little. But somehow, it is worth more than it was when it was brand new. This one in particular is a bit of a unicorn. It is the extended cab four-wheel drive V6 manual. It is rare and desired, but so are the regular Tacomas to a lesser extent for sure. But if you want a vehicle that holds its value over time, you either want a Porsche 911 or a Toyota Tacoma. Why, after two decades and nearly 200,000 miles of hauling motorcycles, dirt, farm, and construction equipment, would a truck owner think that his truck is worth more than it was new? And why would so many buyers agree with him? Is the Toyota Tacoma that good? What about the new one? I found out the answers to these questions, and the answer is yes, the Tacoma is that good, and the new one is better in most ways. But I want to be clear up front. If you are shopping for a mid-size pickup truck in North America, I am not telling you to buy the Tacoma. I am telling you that you are going to buy the Tacoma. It is inevitable. According to buyers, it is clearly the winner. There are so few other segments where one model dominates so prodigiously that I have to use the word prodigiously. No, this is an attempt by me to find out why the Tacoma is so far ahead of the competition. What is it about this relatively simple truck that results in dominant sales numbers? What is its je ne sais quoi? Toyota has been making trucks since before it was Toyota. In fact, the company's first commercially produced automobile was a truck. The Toyota G1 came out in 1935, two years before the company eschewed the family name for a slightly different Toyota. The company went through several trucks in the following years, but we didn't get any of them in the United States until 1964 when the Toyota Stout hit the North American market, where in its first year, Toyota sold four of them. The Stout was replaced a few years later with the Hilux, sold in the United States as the Toyota Pickup. The Hilux is legendary for being indestructible, having been abused and tortured by everyone from cheeky Brits to brash YouTubers to actual terrorists. Toyota still makes the Hilux, and you can buy it in most parts of the world. It is maybe the only vehicle that could get away with having a trim level called Invincible. In North America, we don't get the Invincible Hilux. We get the Taco. In March of 1995, the first-generation Toyota Tacoma began rolling off the assembly line in Fremont, California. The truck differed from the Hilux by being more focused on ride quality, comfort, and safety. Americans like their trucks to do truck stuff, but also to be pretty good at doing not truck stuff, like driving down the road. The first generation was reliable, though not quite as invincible as the Hilux. The boxed frame was prone to capturing moisture and rusting out. Toyota announced a 15-year unlimited mileage warranty on frame corrosion, swapping out rusted frames or buying back trucks. The second generation came out in 2004 and was a larger mid-sized truck with a bigger engine and bigger power, and 18 different combinations of cabs, engines, transmissions, and beds. A taco for everybody. The third generation came out in 2016, not terribly different than the previous generation, dimensionally or functionally. Next year, we get the fourth generation. It is not wildly different, but it is a bigger change than the last one. New engine, new frame, new architecture. Toyota has led the market for mid-sized pickup trucks for a couple of decades, and they will continue doing so. If you're going to buy a truck, but you don't want one that's bigger than a New York apartment, you're going to consider the Tacoma. What, are you going to buy a Colorado? A Frontier? No. Buyers have spoken, and the Taco is king. But why? If you look around roads and parking lots in America, you will see a lot of trucks. And if you look closer, you will see that many of them are Ford F-150s and Chevy Silverados, the two best-selling vehicles in the country. But if you look for the trucks that have stuff in the bed, mud caked on the fenders, or pinstripes down the side, you might see a lot of Toyotas. Now, I'm not saying people don't do truck stuff in Fords and Chevys, but the truck stuff ability of the Tacoma is undeniable. Just look at people who use their truck for work every day and for decades. Tacomas everywhere. And I know a bunch of people are shouting at their screen saying that the Tacoma won't do the work they need it to do because they need to haul 7 billion pounds. But I do a lot of truck stuff and I've never needed to tow more than about 6.5 billion pounds. Really just 6,500 pounds. But if you need a big truck, you need a big truck. And if you just want a big truck, that's fine too. Get a big one. The Tacoma has limitations. It has limitations on size, on towing, and cargo. A Ford Super Duty F-350 has no limitations. It will tow the state of Kansas, and the back seat has enough space for an entire apartment building. 
It is more with a capital M, but if you watch this channel, you've heard me many times say that less is more. The Tacoma is less, and because of that, it fits in more parking spaces, down more off-road trails, you have more money in your pocket at the gas pump, and you can use it to haul two motorcycles and a jet ski that you bought with the money you saved. The Tacoma is less, it fits in a smaller box of functionality, but the things it does inside that box, it does better. I don't know if Elon Musk achieved his goal of having the Cybertruck function as a boat, but as an engineer who has helped design several cars, I can say without a doubt that adding that capability will compromise the functionality of several other aspects of the truck. It will be worse at doing the things you actually do, just so it can do something that you will never do. This is an extreme example, but Toyota knows that engineering a truck is an exercise in balancing trade-offs. You don't get towing capacity for free, you don't get rear legroom for free, and you sure as sh** don't get a boat for free. What Toyota has done with the Tacoma is figure out what 90% of truck users actually do, and they made a truck that only did those things, but did them all really well. And as the needs of truck drivers in North America changed, so did the Tacoma. If you really need or really want a full-size truck, you're in luck because there are a lot of good options, but for almost all the truck people out there, this will do all the truck stuff. As many of you know, I drive a 2010 Toyota 4Runner, and I love it. Why do I love it? Reliability. The previous owner bought this new off the showroom floor, outfitted it for off-roading, and proceeded to put 130,000 incredibly abusive miles on it, taking it on trails all over the western United States. Then he sold it to me, and I further upgraded it for off-roading and put another 50,000 even more abusive miles on it. It has been damaged, it has had broken parts, but it has never left me stranded. The fact that this thing still runs is a miracle of automotive engineering, and I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little biased in favor of the new Tacoma because of my experience with my 4Runner. Typically, when you see reliability for brands on cars, the oldest vehicles are the most reliable, because after 15 years of making the same Challenger, Dodge has figured out all the problems. But this is the first year of this generation of 4Runner. If you look at the most reliable vehicles after several years, most of them are Toyotas. They're so reliable that it's a running joke. As new Tacomas are made, the old ones don't go away. They keep driving. We just add more Tacomas. Eventually, all vehicles will be Tacomas, and they will fill every available space, eventually crushing everyone under the weight of trillions of Toyotas as they slowly consume all the space in the known universe. Reliability is part of simplicity. If you make a truck do a few things really well, you can make it do those things for a long time. Toyota does not assemble well-designed parts into a car. They engineer the whole car. It's designed as a system. This seems obvious, but it's actually pretty hard to do, and not often achieved. I said in a previous video that this is one of the reasons Porsche cars are so good. And it's actually more impressive for Toyota, because the 911 has a lot of bespoke parts. The Tacoma platform is shared with vehicles, having dozens of trims sold all over the world, sharing tons of parts, sub-assemblies, and manufacturing assembly lines. It's pretty impressive from a design, engineering, and manufacturing perspective. I know the comparison between the 911 company and the Sienna company seems like a bit of a stretch. Porsche makes really good sports cars, and that's exciting. Toyota makes really good mundane cars. Less exciting, but still impressive engineering. If you want a family sedan, or a minivan, or a truck to use for your drywall business, Toyota probably has the thing that is most practical and possibly the least exciting. You start to appreciate this kind of thing as you get older, because you start to realize that life is mostly mundane. Almost entirely mundane. And if you have a car that navigates the mundane really well, that makes most of life better. Compared to the competition, the Tacoma is simple, it is pedestrian, and its capabilities are limited. Those are not bugs. They're features. A lot of vehicles will give you all sorts of electronic doohickeys, computer-controlled gizmos, automatic shenanigans, and a lot of people, myself included, view most of these things as superfluous at best. They are failure points and disconnecting you from the experience of operating a car. The car operates the car. It will take your input about gear selection, door locks, or accelerator pedal, consider it, and then decide what it wants to do and what is best for you. This truck does what you tell it to do, when you tell it to do it, every time, no matter what. You want the door unlocked? Put the key in and turn it. You want to shift into second gear? This lever is physically connected to the gears. You decide when you are in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. You decide whether your passenger lives or dies. This truck does everything you need it to do. It does it well, it does it consistently, and it will do it for the rest of time. That is why this truck is still worth so much to so many people. But what about the new one? A few weeks ago, Toyota had a drive event for select members of the press, and also about a hundred YouTubers. 
They invited me out, possibly because I said nice things about the Prius and only made fun of it a little bit. There are a ton of good videos and articles out there if you're interested in the details. David Tracy at The Autopian has an excellent article that I will link in the description. I was mostly curious about what changed and if those changes diminish the reasons people love the old trucks. The answer? Yes. But also no. The engine is new. The base model Tacoma gets a turbocharged 2.4 liter four-cylinder. But if you get a higher trim, you still get the four-cylinder. It's in every Tacoma. Four cylinders all around. Decent power though. The base SR gets about 230, higher trims get another 50, and you can option for the hybrid which gets another 50 on top of that. More importantly for trucks, low end torque is pretty good actually, a lot better than the previous V6. 317 pound feet at 1700 RPM on the mid range, but if you get the hybrid that jumps to 465 pound feet. This was the mid level one and it was great, definitely more usable power than the outgoing model and way more than the first generation. The 8-speed transmission helps a lot. The Tacoma has never been known for having lots of power, but this one has all you'll need, and I do believe them when they say it can tow 6,500 pounds. You can tell it's a turbo 4-cylinder when you're going slow up steep hills. There's a range between lockup and the turbo spooling up that feels a little low on power, but you get this in other vehicles too, and it might just be more noticeable because when the turbo does kick in, it gets moving. You can get this in a manual transmission. A lot of people want this. I asked what their expected take rate was, and one of the guys thought it was close to 10%, which seems high, but this is kind of the target market for the manual transmission truck people. Interestingly, the manual version comes with a lower red line on the engine. It's about 900 RPM less than the auto. This has to do with vibrations in the drivetrain. I expect the added cost of fixing this was probably not worth it, given the lower cost of the manual and the fact that they won't sell a ton of them. This new one definitely feels smoother on the road. It feels less truck-like, but not in a bad way. It's just nicer. Even non-truck people would be happy driving this. Toyota has a lot of variations on the new Tacoma. A lot of trim levels, cab sizes, bed sizes. The cheap one has leaf springs, but the nicer ones have multi-link rear suspension. The truck starts at just over 30 grand, but you'll be able to spend twice that and anywhere in between. They really did try to cover all the bases. And in doing so, they may have made it less good at certain things. This bracket here that holds the front of the leaf springs, or the lower rear link, depending on the trim, it hangs pretty low, and the spare tire is pretty low too. Both of these things might be an issue if you're crawling over some rocks off-road. If I own this truck, I would definitely smash this thing. The trucks also come with this chin spoiler thing that is apparently worth a quarter of a mile per gallon of fuel economy. It's removable if you're going off-road, or you could just leave it there and it'll probably take care of itself. But there are lots of additions that make it better at off-roading. High lift jack points built into the frame, an optional front-facing camera with an inclinometer so you can see how far you're tilted, although it does stop reading after 30 degrees, presumably so drivers don't try to go for a high score. If you're planning on doing a lot of off-roading, Toyota has for you the TRD Pro or the Trail Hunter, loaded with all sorts of things that let your neighbors know that you do all the off-roading and that you definitely got the cool TRD Pro version. I'm less in love with these, I didn't drive these, but I do a lot of off-roading and some of this stuff seems a little gratuitous. I've spent the last 10 minutes talking about how Toyota doesn't add unnecessary stuff, how they don't do gimmicky things, and how they think really carefully before adding features, and then they go and add this thing. It's on the back of the front seat, chewing into the rear seat legroom. It's adjustable with gauges and valves to fill the air, those valves conveniently right at kneecap height. This is the least Tacoma thing on this truck. TRD trims started several years ago with small upgrades to trucks to make it better at off-roading or sporty driving, but they're starting to creep into flashy, look how off-road capable my truck is territory. The trims are more expensive, and the dealer markups have been wild on the 4Runner TRD Pro. If I was going to get a new Tacoma, I would at least consider getting a lower trim like a Sport and adding my own shocks, bumpers, and off-road accoutrements. The new truck also comes with proactive driver assist, automatic braking for corners, pre-collision braking. It'll move over a little bit if it sees a cyclist or pedestrian on the side of the road. These things are quite different from the approach of the old Taco. You no longer get to decide if someone lives or dies. The car decides for you. The computer in the truck is in between you and the road, disconnecting you a little bit, sometimes, from the actual driving. The first generation was analog. It was simple, it was rugged, it did have that frame rust issue, but aside from that, it was pretty bulletproof. The second generation got bigger and more powerful with several configurations and a touchscreen, and now it's downright comfortable and fuel efficient and modern. It's different. A lot different. The truck might have some situations off-road that it struggles with compared to the older ones. There is a computer in there foiling your attempts to kill pedestrians. You can get the manual, but you do lose revs, and the TRD trims have bells and whistles that are probably antithetical to what makes the old Tacomas desirable. 
A modern 911 is not a 356, but you can feel the connection. Nobody is cross-shopping these, they're so different, but both pretty excellent. The new Tacoma is not a first-gen, it's more complex, and bigger, and more comfortable, and safer, and will haul way more stuff. The box of functionality is a lot bigger than the first generation, but it is still a Tacoma. It still has the Toyota truck feel, it has the engineering and reliability, yes it has power windows and stability control, and that turbocharger doesn't do much for simplicity. But a more complex system that results in more simple user experience is great, as long as it's done well, and as long as it's built to last. The reason people like the simplicity of the Tacoma is not because it doesn't have features, it's because it doesn't have features that get in the way, or that break. In my admittedly limited experience with this truck, I did not feel like anything got in the way. And while only time will tell, Toyota has been the best at adding features without compromising durability. Less is more, but sometimes, when done really well, more is pretty good too. Engineering, materials, analysis, and testing have all improved so much that I would be willing to bet the Turbo 4 lasts longer than the old first-gen engines, and I bet the power windows last as long as the truck does. Toyota cars last forever, and the company tests its trucks to 50% more years and miles than the cars, so the new Tacoma will last forever, plus 50%. And I think that's really why people like the old Tacomas. They do what they're supposed to do, they do it well, and they just keep doing it. It used to be that you had to impress people to get people to watch your show. Now you just have to impress the algorithm. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. All hail the algorithm. Mm -hmm.